everybody, how are you doing? What is going on? Let me know how your days are. For those of you who are new here, I waffle on about basically everything. So if you want to explore life with me, do hit the subscribe button and let me know who you are in the comments. Before I waffle on any further, let's get on with today's video. Right now in the UK it is November, which means the evenings are drawing in. There is a lot less light in the day, or at least that's how it feels. And I know for a lot of us, this can be quite a struggle. Some of us will experience SAD, which is seasonal affective disorder. Seasonal affective disorder is a legitimate disorder whereby your mood and depression can be triggered by certain seasons, usually and typically winter and autumn. There has been so much scientific evidence to prove that SAD is a legitimate disorder. For instance, we get substantially less vitamin D during the winter months, which contributes to feeling low and having less motivation and generally feeling a bit icky. We use scientific language here only, clearly. <laughs> If you are experiencing SAD or any form of depression, please do seek help. It will be taken seriously by a medical professional and you could find you feel substantially better after having a chat with someone. And sometimes just being heard helps. When I sat down and started to think about SAD and seasonal depression, I wanted to come up with some ideas to help with people, but I don't particularly feel sad during winter. I quite like the winter months. So I thought instead I would give some advice on something that really helps me throughout the year, no matter what time of day it is. And one of the best coping strategies I have found for my mental health, and that is walking. Physical exercise of any kind has known benefits for both our mental and physical health. Obviously our physical health. <laughs> Anything that works our cardiovascular system and gets our heart rate up a little bit is known to have so many benefits for everything for our life in general. So why have I found walking so beneficial? I am not a gym goer. I don't like the gym. The gym fills me with quite a bit of stress. I have tried. <laughs> I promise you I've tried, but the whole environment around the gym, I've just never really found one that makes me feel comfortable. Um, that's not to say that I never will, I'm willing to give them a try and give them a go, but for now I don't want to put my mental health in a poor place just to go to the gym when there are other things I can be doing. Walking is often dismissed as a form of exercise because we do it literally every single day. If we walk to the shops, if we're walking around the office at work, or just walking around our houses. But when we decide to meaningfully walk, it can make a huge, huge difference to our mental health, particularly in the winter months, funnily enough. So what are the benefits of walking every day? Walking releases those feel-good hormones we all know about, and studies have shown that this can improve a number of things. Firstly, it can improve your mood, like that. If I could click right now. Firstly, it can improve your mood like that. Better. It can help reduce stress and settle anxieties you might have. It can help you sleep better and it can actually help you increase your energy levels. It can improve your confidence and self-esteem and it can help improve symptoms of depression. Along with the mental side of things, which we're mainly focusing on this video, walking helps with a lot of physical aspects of our lives too. It helps us maintain a healthy weight. It can keep your muscles and bones healthy and it can increase your overall cardiovascular fitness. According to recent as well. It can also help reduce the risk of some other medical conditions such as high blood pressure and strokes. It can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes along with a variety of cancers. But how much walking do we really need to do a day? Well, according to the NHS and Bupa Fitness, we should do around 150 minutes of exercise a week or around two and a half hours. This is anything that gets your heart rate going, your blood pumping around your body and just making you feel a bit warmer and a bit out of breath. Don't push it too much though and make sure you gradually work it up. Don't go from being very sedentary to trying to run a marathon. If I try to run a marathon right now, 
Firstly, I wouldn't do it. Secondly, I probably wouldn't make it down the stairs of this apartment. I should really work on my fitness. I can't keep using asthma as an excuse. So now we know the benefits of walking, how can we actually implement it in our day? For me, I notice a real difference when I don't walk in the day. I often feel a bit grouchy, a bit slimy, and like I don't really feel myself. And I've noticed that's a pattern when I don't walk if that makes sense. I do really notice the difference when I don't walk every single day. I've just learned that if I don't walk, I'm gonna suffer for it mentally, probably. This isn't to say you have to walk every single day, but I would say if you're suffering from SAD or depression and anxiety generally, it is a good idea to get into the habit of walking. So how can you do this? On average, it takes over two months to create a habit. Sometimes it can take up to a year, but I find saying two months is a lot less scary. Obviously, this also means negative things can become a habit in just over two months. So focus on those at a different time because we're talking about walking this time, but we'll, we'll come back to that, I'm sure of it. I could not tell you exactly what would work with you to get into a walking routine, but I can certainly tell you what things have worked for me in the past, and these do change. Our lives are not one perfect linear routine all the time and sometimes we have to adapt our routines a little bit to fit around our life. That's the key thing when it comes to walking. Don't let it own your life and own your schedule. Make sure it works around you. So if you go on holiday, for instance, you don't have to give up walking every day. Just make it part of that temporary routine. I do feel as though a lot of us stick to a routine religiously without any form of adaptation or flexibility. We just need to be open with the fact that our routines might change and what comes with that is our walking routines might change too. So definitely be open to some flexibility when you start your walking routine. When I first started trying to walk every day, I started in the morning. As soon as I got up, I would go for a walk, even if it was just 10, 15 minutes around my block. I found that this helped me start my day. Particularly in winter here in the UK, it's often lighter in the morning, unless it's raining but it's often lighter in the morning. So if you go and get that 20 minutes burst of walking out of the way, you will probably find you have more energy in the day and it gives you purpose to get up and get going. I have friends who have dogs and they say that since they've got their dog and they have to get up and walk them in the morning, they feel a massive boost in their mental health and their fitness generally because they have a purpose to get out of bed. You don't need a dog to do this, although I really, 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 really recommend having a dog if, if, you, if you don't. <laughs> you can create a purpose for yourself. Another great piece of advice I got was to replace shorter car journeys with walking. I know this might seem really, really obvious, but actually a lot of us don't implement this advice in our everyday life. Quite often walking is actually faster than driving. If you've got a 20 minute walk or a 10 minute drive, often that 10 minute drive turns into you procrastinating to leave or you can't find a parking space, you get stuck in traffic, all sorts of things can happen on your drive. If you just know to leave 20 minutes earlier, you are getting your 20 minute walk in and you don't have to worry about parking or traffic or anything like that and you're getting your walk in. I am very lucky, I work for myself so I don't have much of a structure in the day or not so much as what other people have. So if you work in an office, for instance, you might want to use your lunch break to take a little stroll around the block, even if it's just 10 minutes. I know you will have to eat your lunch too and sort of get that much needed scroll time or, you know, whatever else people do on their lunch break. But even just 10 minutes can help you stretch your legs and feel a bit more relaxed and ready for the rest of your day. Walking can help break up your day and it's a really nice way of doing that and getting some fresh air too. One of my favorite things to do while I'm walking is listening to a podcast or an audiobook. Audiobooks have been my favorite thing recently. I have been able to listen to so many audiobooks. The only downside is Audible doesn't give me very many credits and I definitely need more than one a month. So Audible, if you can hear this, please send me more credits. <laughs> I feel like sometimes our lives feel so busy and we want to multitask as best we can, but sometimes this can lead to more stress and more anxiety. By walking and listening to an audiobook or a podcast, you can feel like you're doing two things at once. You're exercising and learning or unwinding. You could even study while you walk if you've got an audiobook of something 
you study. I don't know, I know what I mean. Although I haven't done this, I know people who have, but you can download walking apps, which I'll find and pop some links in the description, where you can explore your local area and places you possibly would never have seen had you not started walking. It's also a great way to meet new people if you're in a new city or just wanting to get a bit more social. Walking is a brilliant way of doing that. And not only will that help with getting regular exercise, it'll also possibly improve the depression or anxiety if you're getting out there and chatting to other people. Chances are those people will have experienced something similar to you as well. So it's a great way to not feel so alone in these feelings. Walking has so, so many benefits and I found that it's probably my best coping strategy for certain mental health disorders I have. Particularly in the colder months, we feel like we just want to hibernate and hide under our duvets or just sit in our tracksuit bottoms and eat everything in sight basically. But actually going out for a brisk walk, even if it's cold outside, as long as you wrap up warm and wear the appropriate footwear, it can feel really great when you come back knowing that you've done that bit of exercise and you can just sit and snuggle up on the sofa if you want to for the rest of the evening. Although it's such a simple thing to add into your life, walking can change your whole outlook if you give it a chance. Remember, it does take over two months to make a habit, so try and put it in there maybe once or twice a week to start and eventually gradually build that up. You don't have to go on eight mile hikes every single day, you can just pop in a 15 minute walk every single day if you choose to, or a slightly longer walk two, three, four times a week if that works better. Remember, your schedule is yours. Make it your own and it'll help you to deal with certain things that are going on in the world. Like I always say, I'm not a mental health professional if you can't tell by my very scientific language. So please do seek medical help if you need it. I'll pop some links down below. Lastly, something that I've actually recently got into is wearing a Fitbit. I have previously got very obsessive with exercise and losing weight in the past, which I can talk about in another video. So I was a little bit afraid of getting a Fitbit as I didn't want to get obsessive again. But actually, I find it a great way of knowing how many steps I'm doing in the day. And I'm also not very good at telling the time. So a Fitbit helps with that, oddly enough. That's a little confession of mine. The Fitbit I'm wearing is the Inspire 2, I believe, but I will pop a link in the description where you can have a look. It's quite affordable for a Fitbit, and I really recommend it if you're trying to get that step count up. You aren't alone in your mental health and the things you struggle with. Quite often you will find somebody else who is in a similar boat to you. We are all living very different lives, but sometimes we can help each other and talk to each other and comfort one another when we need it. Walking is excellent, but I have so many other strategies for coping with the darker, colder months and generally suffering from depression and anxiety. If you have anything you want me to talk about, please do pop it in the comments. This community is so, so, so lovely and I am so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know how you're getting on with your walking and I will see you in the next one. Bye. And we're back with the post credits even though I don't have credits. Oh, I've been sat. I can't feel, I can't feel my foot. Oh no. Ah, oh, you know when they get to the point of being past tingly and you just, it feels like your foot's going through a hole. That's happening right now. Oh, I don't think I can stand. Ah, oh. anyway, I hope you guys are all right to the few people who watch to the end, you know who you are. Um, I hope you're good. Wish me luck for trying to get my feet back to living and have a lovely day. I'm sure I will see you in the comments. Bye.